हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू डायग्नोज इट एंड हेयर वी आर विद द नेक्स्ट वीडियो एंड द थर्ड वीडियो इन द सीरीज ऑफ इंटरग्रेनल ब्लीड्स एंड फर्स्टली लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट दिस वट दिस सब एरेक्नोइड हेमरेज इज वेल एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू अबाउट द लेयर्स ऑफ मैरिजेज ओवर द ब्रेन दिस सब एरेक्नोइड हेमरेज बेसिकली स्टेट्स दैट द ब्लीडिंग इज प्रेजेंट बिलो द एरेक्नोइड मैटर एंड वट इज बिलो द एरेक्नोइड मैटर एज एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दिस इज द ब्रेन मैटर एंड दिस इज द दिस पाया मैटर दैट इज just adherent to the brain parenchyma and above this pyometer this is the arachnoid and between this arachnoid and this pyometer this is a space this is called as this subarachnoid space and in this subarachnoid space there is this csf present and when the bleeding occurs in this space then this is called as subarachnoid hemorrhage and uh, before everything let me tell you about the ct findings that you can see here well this white colored area uh, this here this all white colored area that you can see all that i'm underlining is the white colored area and this is basically the blood that is present in the various cisterns and various subarachnoid spaces as you can see this is a subarachnoid cistern and uh, this is extending in the uh, the sylvian fissure and as you can see there are a lot of other places or other subarachnoid spaces where you can clearly see the presence of blood so this presence of blood in this subarachnoid space this clearly states that this is a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage Now let's discuss why this subarachnoid hemorrhage occur. Well, let me tell you the most common cause of this subarachnoid hemorrhage is trauma. And don't get it wrong, aneurysm rupture is not the most common cause. Yeah, it is a cause. The rupture of aneurysm is a cause, but it is not the most common cause. Trauma is still remains the most common cause of this subarachnoid hemorrhage. Here in this aneurysm type of uh, this rupture, I am talking about non-traumatic type of aneurysm rupture, not the traumatic one. Traumatic ones are included in this trauma. Well. there is a very interesting history that in these type of a traumatic type of aneurysm rupture these are most commonly seen in a middle aged person and most commonly the middle aged person these are seen after a strenuous post coital activity and the features by which the patient present is the worst headache of his life and it is called as thunderclap headache there is a very interesting history that uh, before this thunderclap headache uh, around 1 to 2 week before that there is a warning headache also but yeah this warning headache is quite difficult to differentiate from the normal type of headache that a uh, lot of people usually get but yeah there is this warning headache the presence of a very sharp headache one to two weeks before this occurrence of thunderclap headache this is the warning headache there is this interesting thing about the aneurysm there are majorly two types of aneurysm one is this this shape suppose this is a blood vessel and this kind of shape this is called as berry aneurysm and one is this directly arising from the blood vessel this is called as secular aneurysm and secular aneurysms are more common than berry aneurysm and the rupture of these aneurysms leads to development of this subarachnoid hem now let's come to some risk factors and in the risk factors the smoking uh, alcohol consumption cocaine use increasing age any history of uh, any connective tissue disease like this marfan syndrome or this eds ehlers and lowe syndrome or this polycystic kidney disease these are basically the risk factors and due to these risk factors the uh, the lining of the blood vessel basically weakens that leads to increase in the chance of rupture of the blood vessel following a trauma that leads to this subarachnoid hemorrhage now let's come to the presentation of the patient and in the presentation part uh, there are two things that we have discussed one is about this thunderclap headache and apart from thunderclap headache that warning headache that we have discussed earlier uh, the other signs are this loss of consciousness uh, there is this meningismus do you know what is this meningismus uh, these are basically the group of signs that occurs due to the meningeal irritation well the bacterial meningitis or any other cause of meningitis are a cause of meningismus but the meningismus basically means the symptoms that develop due to the irritation of meninges and those symptoms include uh, like this neck rigidity this kerning and brudzinski sign positive this vomiting photophobia the other signs include seizures why these seizures occur because as i have already told you that uh, above this brain parenchyma uh, there is a very thin layer of pyometer and above this pyometer this is the arachnoid and when the blood is present between this arachnoid and this pyometer this basically irritates the brain parenchyma and due to this irritation this leads to development of seizures and other symptoms include this neck and back pain why this neck and back pain occur because uh, this subarachnoid space this is not the space that is present in brain only uh, this continues in the spinal cord too and due to the presence of csf 
द ब्लड हेयर ऑल्सो गोज टू द स्पाइनल कोड एंड वेन इट रिच इज द स्पाइनल कोड इट बेसिकली इरीटेट्स द नर्व्स एंड वेन द नर्व्स ऑफ नेक एंड दिस बैक आर इरीटेटेड दैट लीड्स टू डेवलपमेंट ऑफ नेक एंड बैक पेन ऑल्सो एंड एज वी ऑलरेडी नो दैट दिस सी एस एफ इज एब्जॉर्व बाय दिस एरेक्नोइड ग्रेनुलेशन एंड वेन द एरेक्नोइड ग्रेनुलेशन दिस ब्लड रीच इज दिस एरेक्नोइड ग्रेनुलेशन दीज आर बेसिकली सम देर आर सम होल्स प्रेजेंट इन इट एंड वेन द आर बी सीज एंड अदर ब्लड सेल्स रीच इज इन इट देन दे बेसिकली क्लॉग्स दिज होल्स एंड दैट लीड्स टू डिक्रीज इन सी एस एफ एब्जॉर्बन एंड वेन द सी एस एफ एब्जॉर्बन इज डिक्रीज दिस लीड्स टू डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हाइड्रोसिफेलिस एंड वेन दिस हाइड्रोसिफेलिस डेवलप एंड एंड इफ इट बिकम्स मोर सीवियर दैन दिस ऑल्सो can leads to this herniation of the brain and due to the pressure effect there are a lot other symptoms like some focal neurological deficit and this focal neurological deficit this can also be due to direct irritation by the blood and this uh, increase in the pressure in the brain can also lead to development of this focal neurological deficit in the brain these are basically the direct manifestations from this blood affecting the uh, brain parenchyma well there are some other extra cerebral manifestations like this neurogenic pulmonary edema and this neurogenic stunned myocardium these are also seen in this subarachnoid hemorrhage now let's come to the diagnosis part well the diagnosis first thing is the history that we have discussed the history of a very sudden very severe headache and with other this focal neurological deficits and other kind of symptoms of meningitis next thing is uh, if the patient present with these kind of symptoms the first investigation that we go for is the ncct ncct basically means non contrast ct scan why we go for non contrast ct scan rather than contrast ct scan because when we inject a contrast as you know the contrast appears white and the blood also appears white so if we give contrast then we cannot uh, clearly appreciate the presence of blood that is why we use this non contrast ct scan so that we can clearly appreciate the blood present so this is the investigation of choice but yeah uh, after that ncct sometimes a very small kind of uh, uh, this subarachnoid hemorrhage if it is present then uh, this is not quite evident on this ncct then we have to go for this mri also and in the mri too the flare sequence this is the best sequence to diagnose this uh, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage about the findings of this subarachnoid hemorrhage in this ncct i have already told you these are the findings this presence of blood in the subarachnoid space subarachnoid cisterns now let's come to the next part this uh, treatment of this subarachnoid hemorrhage first of all it should be dealt like an emergency and as an emergency condition this abc of the patient this uh, airway breathing and circulation of the patient are managed in the airway the patient should be intubated if the gcs this glasgow coma score of the patient is below 8 in the circulation also the patient should be given uh, this normal saline but this should be taken care of that uh, hypertension is also a risk factor for development of this subarachnoid hemorrhage so hypertension should not occur we should not uh, overload the fluid like the blood pressure of the patient should be maintained around 140 this systolic blood pressure uh, we should not increase the systolic blood pressure to more than 160 because uh, this basically aggravates the situation after that there is this drug called nemodepine This is basically a calcium channel blocker that uh, dilates the blood vessel in the brain. Seizure prophylaxis. Seizure prophylaxis should also be given to the patient because most of the patient within 24 hour of subarachnoid hemorrhage develop seizures. And if a seizure develop within 24 hour and uh, before securing the aneurysm, then this is a very devastating condition for the patient because if a seizure occur with this aneurysm being open, then this leads to a very massive bleeding inside the brain and the the condition of the patient may deteriorate very fastly so this seizure prophylaxis should be given well uh, the another thing is this uh, hydrocephalus this hydrocephalus if the signs of hydrocephalus are present then uh, this ventricular peritoneal shunt or some kind of shunting procedure for this hydrocephalus should be done because this hydrocephalus can also lead to uh, this brain herniation and that brain herniation can itself lead to the death well the definitive management is this clipping of aneurysm and before the clipping we need to know the exact location and to know the exact location this mr or ct angiography should be done and after the uh, after we get to know the exact location of the aneurysm the neurosurgical clipping of the aneurysm should be done so basically we need to secure the aneurysm so that no further bleeding should occur so this is all about this subarachnoid hemorrhage it is a quite interesting topic and if you have any questions regarding this then do post it in the comment section below or you can also dm me on my instagram handle at diagnosed and don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel diagnosed thank you